So today we have the awesome Ellen Devine here to teach us a Bixie cut. <laughs> Ellen is a Sanvia art team member, master stylist at Lunatic Fringe in Salt Lake City, and she has traveled the entire nation through the show circuits, teaching in salons. And she has a really wonderful teaching style. It's very traditional, but definitely with a twist. And she really focuses on helping hairdressers to evolve behind the chair and creating solutions for their day-to-day -day challenges. So please welcome in the chats, Ellen Devine. Hello, good morning. Stoked to be here. We have people from all over today. I saw like Nova mm -hmm. Scotia, Canada, Scotland, India, Tennessee, all the places. So welcome. We're excited to have you guys. And thanks, Andrew. Um, just like, let's get right into it. So we're doing a Bixie cut, which, you know, in the comments, if you want to type like, what's what the heck's a Bixie? Um, it's literally a Bob and Pixie. It's funny because I feel like we do these kinds of things, but now we're putting names to them, which is great because our clients know what to ask for. Right. So I've done half of the mannequin already. So she's looking good. They got their little like wispy shaggy fringe going on. And we're going to kind of connect this and really blow it out. If we don't have time to blow dry it today, we'll put it on my Instagram stories later. So hello from across, across the pond in the UK. Excited to have you guys. So think about what's the difference between a Bixie and a Pixie, right? What really do you think makes that shift? We're going to be using a couple different tools as we get into it. And I'll go through. I hear someone says, oh, this is great for, or is this cut good for curly hair? You know, I think some of the ways I do things, I might shift for curly hair. Um, but once we get into it, let's talk about that, like through each section. Um, and I'm just going to start right into it. I want to show you my sectioning. So you're going to notice half is done, right? And I have this nape area sectioned out. So how we found that is just where that head starts changing direction. I always put my comb on it, where that comb lifts off the head right there. That is that shift in direction. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line. And that's how I find this bottom nape section. To find that back area, I do the exact same thing, but with the crown. If you lay your comb on top of the head, I set her down. If you lay it on top of the head, where that comb lifts off in the crown area is going to be that change of direction. You could literally put a box on the head shape like this. Now, obviously, I have clips in there, but boom, right there. If I found the box, and I'm looking right here where the change of direction is happening. All I did was just take a little lower U shape just like that around the edge. So you're basically doing your horseshoe shape parting, but you're just going to dip it down slightly, just a little bit in the back there. Right. And then on top of it, you're going to find that highest point of the head, which is really visually easy to find. You're going to find that high point and you're just going to draw a line to the top of the ear right here. So all of that's going to separate the top. We have our little triangle fringe area. We'll get into that as we get up top here. But here's the complete sectioning. Now, this mannequin has fringe already. So I've just put it in a little, little tiny triangle, if you will. Boom, just like that. All right. So you just want to section it out based off the head shape. And the reason we do this is because would you agree in the comments, type out, do you think everyone's head is shaped the same? Okay, so do we think everyone has the same shape head? So think of it this way. If we're cutting hair and we're learning a haircut, why would we just put a haircut, copy and paste it on someone's head shape? So my sections, a lot of times, I used to kind of get on myself. I'd say, oh, they're not really, uh, they're not unique enough. I need to do more creative things. But as Andrew told you, I kind of define myself as a traditional cutter, but with a little bit of a twist, right? So I do a lot of classic sections, if you will, meaning I like to go with the client's head shape because it's like getting a really nice tailored suit, a nice tailored pair of pants, a pair of jeans or whatever it may be. It's fit to your body. So why not do that with hair? Let's tailor a haircut to fit to your head shape so that it fits perfect and you feel confident, right? So that's the sectioning. We're gonna start off with, let's see, what scissors? I'm gonna use my classic series today, but we're gonna go with my Invisiblends, which I stuck in my pocket. That doesn't seem safe, don't do that. <laughs> so um, let's see what we got going on. Oh, we have Hong Kong here. Everyone's head shape is different, exactly. So I want you to notice right here in the snake area, 
I have, let me turn to the side here, really, really, really tiny little hairs back here. Boom. That's my guide. Still, oh, I'm, let's get to a point where you can see, guys. Okay, so my guide is going to be this tiny, tiny, tiny little piece of hair right here. Okay, now how I established that is I decided I want to disconnect that nape area. So I want it to kind of sink in, but I don't want it to be blended because I want it to have a lot of movement, a lot of softness to it. So I'm going to use my Invisiblends, right? So these are the Invisiblends right here. Let me get out of the way so we can get boom. All right. So they're going to cut sort of like a razor and it's going to be a polished edge. So this is what's going to actually cut right here, not this. So this blade is not going to cut. It's all using the teeth which gives almost like a razor effect, which is why I love these shears. I'm going to show you two angles. I'll show you from behind right here so you can see how we establish our guide. And then I'll go to the side so you can see my elevation. I'm going to clip this dry hair out of the way. And we're going to start right here in the back. I've just taken a vertical subparting right here. This is right where that head would start to change direction. So I'm doing it in bite-sized pieces, right? And I'm going to get nice and close. I'm going to pump this mannequin up as tall as we can. There we go. And I'm just going to start by elevating, elevating up. And I'm elevating it right to my guide. Now, how I established my guide is I placed my finger against the head and I elevated everything straight up 90 degrees. I'm going to put the teeth on the top. And as I cut, you can go back and forth. And I'm also just going to whip out. So I do get a little bit of length happening in some of the pieces. But anytime I'm cutting with texture shears, I like to go back and forth, pull in and out a little bit. And then I'll just get a different edge to it. So it's not going to be a perfect straight line, which is exactly what I'm looking for. A little bit of textured edge. Okay, so now let's go to this side. Let's get to where you guys can see right here. Nice and close. Okay, so now we're right in this ear area. Because we're doing a pixie bob, if you will, I want to maintain some weight and length behind the ear. I like to leave that till I start to detail my cut. So I'm just going to take a diagonal back line, and I'm not going to cut this area behind the ear. I want to start by just leaving that, and I can detail after. So here's the side profile right here. Boom. That's where I'm going to cut. So now my finger position is consistent with this exact section right here. And my finger obviously is in the way. So I'll turn so you guys can see how we cut it. But I'm going to cut to my guide that's sticking out right in that comb right there. So we're cutting it to the scalp. It's going to be to the scalp. Excuse my back. And really close to the head right there. So now let's see how these scissors work. So back and forth and just pull out a little bit. This is awesome to do dry in bobs as well. As I let this next section down, this mannequin was already cut in a bob. So I want you to see how it just kind of sinks bobs in as well. But when you look at that profile, you're starting to get that nice lean shape. And it's just a really fast, effective way to cut and get that kind of sunken in look in the back without having to take a million vertical sections, and I'm still gonna get the leanness to it. And then we'll cut this length, but let's drop our next section down. And we can see how this affects kind of on bobs and stuff. All right, so comb to kind of break out that set. I'm gonna get this wet a little bit more. If you guys have any questions, Make sure to ask them in the chat because we'd love to answer any questions, right? So someone had asked if this is good for curly hair. So if you're thinking about curly, I always think of like what type of curly hair do you have? Because I've definitely done this cut on someone that has more looser waves kind of wavy hair. But I, I'll just be honest, I have yet to do it on someone with very curly hair. And I would probably attack it a little bit different, right? I prefer to cut curly hair dry. It's just kind of my taste, my flavor. So I think that would really affect what I'm doing as well. Okay, so now we have kind of the length of our bob right here. So I'm going to cut this length, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start layering the silhouette first, and I'm going to switch to my classic series shears, right? So here they are. 
These are awesome. You can see that it has a classic handle right there. It has my favorite part, which is like the little knob that adjusts and stuff. And these cut like butter. So I love that. <laughs> All right. So now, because we want the pixie look, right? We want it to kind of look like a pixie, look like a bob. I did disconnect it, but it's not completely insanely disconnected. It's just by a bit. So I'm going to show you my previous section that I already had cut. Okay, so you can see right here, there's my previous section. Here's my next section. So I really surpassed it. When you're disconnecting hair, you want to make sure that you kind of have this distance, this gap, because if it completely stacks up and blends on top of each other and you just go through and completely blend it, you almost get this like weight line in the back. It's going to be really heavy and we want it to be soft and movable and look like a bob and a pixie combined. So we're going to surpass it just a bit. And now when we get to this point, I'm going to start taking vertical sections and I'm taking vertical sections because I want it to be lean, right? I'm going to tilt this camera down so you guys can get a good angle. Let's see what questions. Let's see. All right. First vertical section, and this can get a bit repetitive because it's just going to be the same motion over and over. But I'm just going to take from my previous guide. I'm using my white comb on dark hair because that's going to help me be able to see. And I'm going to point cut. Notice my finger angle has volume to the top. What I mean by that volume, meaning there's more hair, right? There's more hair. So in hair cutting, when we talk about volume, it's not necessarily how much volume you see, meaning like styled volume, poofiness at the top. It's going to be the amount of hair. So what's the amount of hair? Okay, as I'm cutting, I over directed to the previous section in this back area. So I'm over directing to the previous section. And then right when I change gears is when I hit this corner on the head shape. So to talk through that, the head is what shape? Square, round, rectangle, think about it, it's round, right? So when we're cutting on a round surface, we want to find those changes in direction, just like we did when we were sectioning. But now if I lay my comb flat on the back and another comb or my hand flat on the side right here, it's almost going to make a little box, right? This is where the head starts to change direction. So I place my thumb right there and that tells me the head is changing direction. So this is my point of reference I'm going to use for my next section. So I'm going to take all the hair right here, right behind the ear, and over directed to the corner of the head shape, which is also going to be in my previous section right here. Now, take a guess in the chat box. Why do you think we're going to over direct right now? Think about the cut we're doing. What does over direction cause? When we use over direction and hair cutting, what does it do? Here's my guide. I'm going to flip back and find that guide, and I'm going to point cut. So I don't cut too far down. I'm going to readjust and comb. My elevation that I'm taking right now is in what I would call straight graduation. So this is straight graduation with a horizontal 90 degree line. Okay, before we elevated everything straight up 90 degrees, which we call straight graduation. And I was trained principle-based design by Redkin. So this is just how what I call it. It's called a little different by everyone, but this would be 90 degrees horizontal. All the grains of the hair are coming straight out. Now, as I'm cutting, I'm off to the side so y'all can see, but I want to show you body position wise. As I'm cutting, the point that I'm over directing or cutting to is where my body will be. So my body is always going to be right where I'm cutting. Think about when you put your hands out in front of you and you pull them to the center. It's very easy to just pull everything to the center of your body. And it's good skills to kind of know your body positioning when cutting. So you're not cutting like this and turning your head all the time or up on it too close. You want to take a step back, really see your work. And I always put my left foot out first. So I kind of pop my left foot out and just balance and cut. Everything's pulled straight to my body. So I see someone say, let's see. You want to leave some length in the area. Yes, I want to leave length in the area right here. 
And to explain it one more time to recap. So if you notice, I want a little bit of over direction happening. I want some length and weight in the front of this cut, right? So I'm going to heavily texturize this. But when you look at the dry side, if you look at just the silhouette, the layers, you can kind of see this short to long bob happening right here. So the effect we're looking for is short to long. And when I look and think about what my movements are in haircutting, because I've only layered so far, I'm only layering. So I want things to be short to long, which tells me I have to use over direction in haircutting. So we started right here and let's even simplify it right here. You could take this entire section in the back, right? Because here's where the head starts to change direction. So I'm just going to take a vertical section where the head starts to round, right where the head starts to round. You could take all of this hair over if you want and just cut right at the center parting. Okay, now your body position is going to move. My body's going to be right on that corner of the head. I'm going to take all of this section to that corner and cut. So the, uh, the over direction is what we call in Redkin language that I was trained under to the points of reference. So the point of reference would be the center back of the head right here and then the left corner back. Right, so I'm over directing all the hair between left corner back and the center to the center. Then I'm over directing all the hair from the top of the ear to the left corner back to left corner back. If that makes sense and slow it down a bit more, show some love in the comments. Okay, so let's move on. I've got my silhouette kind of happening here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start etching in that hairline. So I want it to start looking more like a pixie, less like a bob. I'm going to switch my tools quite a lot here. I'm going to go to a razor now. And I'll also do a scissor too. So I see. Thanks. Okay, Mara, I hope that helped. <laughs> Good. So I'm going to go to a razor and get some of that length off. And then I might go through with my scissors and clean it up a bit more as well. So using my razor because I don't want it too, too blunt to start. So I'm gonna kind of switch between scissors and razors, right? So I'm gonna use my razor right here and just start etching in this bottom line. Throw my thumb on the floor first. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna line it up with this bottom line that we start to see right here. I'm gonna turn slightly so I can see what's going on as well. And when I do this, I'm just gonna sort of pinch and etch, right? So I'm gonna pinch the bottom and etch because I'm just looking for a soft little textured edge. I don't want a super harsh blunt line. Yes, Andrew, over direction to the points of reference. Glad you got it. So as you notice too on this side, we kind of have a straight line happening, but then I almost kind of kick a little length forward. So it looks like it's get long, it gets longer, but in reality, it's just a square line cut in the back. And I just sort of push it forward to look that way, right? So we're going to cut this just even straight in the back. Just like so. And just sort of etch at that hairline a little bit. And you can go through in detail once it's dry. I definitely always do that. So I'm getting most of it off wet. And can you do this haircut dry? Absolutely. You definitely can. I think it's what you're comfortable with and also the type of hair texture you're working on. I tried some of it dry when I pre-cut this, but I prefer to do it wet. I just feel like I have more control in my sections. So. so now we have kind of the basis of the back done. Any of these little hairs, just kind of get those off just like so. Okay, most of this is done. The other thing that I sort of did, so since we elevated the bottom, straight up, we're going to have more length at the nape area, really all the way at the bottom. So to sort of sink it in just a bit more, I just like to kind of hit the razor on top and almost just surface cut. That's just going to kind of lean in that hair. So surface cutting, when you surface cut with a razor, there's a very, very gentle touch to it. Let me get this hair out of the way so you can see. 
I'm not going in and really putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm just laying it on the hair here. And it's a very gentle little scratch, if you will, because I just want to get the bulk of that hair off so that it doesn't look so puffy down there. I'm not necessarily trying to cut as maybe just texturize that top surface. And sometimes I find like, well, let me ask you guys in the chats, do you find cutting short hair a little challenging? And if so, what are the challenges you have with cutting short hair? You know, cause I think a lot of us are challenged with one, what sections to take, like, how do I start my haircut in general? And then two, I used to do this. I used to feel like I need to do a perfect section every time. And I felt like it was wrong. I'm exposing myself. <laughs> I felt like it was wrong to kind of just artistically feel my way through it. But now I've found that I do a mixture of both, right? So I have the structure to it, but then I notice like, okay, well that's really heavy right there. So my old way would think, okay, I need to take my texturizing shears take the same elevation, texturize it, or do something like that made sense. Now it's like, I'm going to take my razor and just etch it a bit because it just needs to be sunken in a little. I don't necessarily need to put an exact reason to it, except that I feel it. And I feel like it should be a little flatter, right? Oh, I love it. Harley said she's more comfortable. Or they're more comfortable with short haircuts. That's awesome. I think it's something that can really set you apart because... I do a lot of short haircuts in um, the salon I'm at. And I just moved out here like five months ago, right? So I sort of stepped into this position where someone had a clientele and they moved and I kind of got blessed with it. And they had a lot of short haircuts. And every time I talk to someone that has short hair, their number one thing is like, you feel comfortable with short hair, right? Or you're a short hair specialist, right? Maybe you want to frame yourself that way. But I think it's really important that everyone knows how to cut short hair because it's such a high demand and they are very loyal guests in your chairs as well. I would say that. So super, super loyal. OK, so let's get back to kind of where to go. This is a part where I used to feel sort of lost when I get into it because I used to try and keep it completely in a bob shape. But in reality, how are they going to wear it? Do they want their ear to be exposed? Do they want it to be a complete kind of bob? I used to feel like, oh, I need to kind of follow the hairline and make the bob connect, right? So cutting around, look, someone just said around the ears and the sideburn area is hard to decide shape and texture. That's exactly how I've always felt. So with this, I know that I'm going to have some short layers, but right here in the side area, I want length, but I want some hair to be released so that I can expose the ear if I have the option to, right? So here's where it gets a little artistic, if you will. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to cut this length off first. I'm going to use scissors to start because I'm going to switch to the razor. So I'm going to comb straight down. And I'm just going to take this whole section and get all the hair. Okay, and I'm just going to point cut straight across. Some tips when point cutting. If you hold the hair, it's sandwiched between my fingers like this, right? So the hair is going to be between my fingers. And when I hold it, it has tension on it. So I'm holding it between my fingers with some tension. My finger is pretty much landing on the head right there. And then I'm just going to rest my steel blade on my ring finger so that the only blade moving is what my thumb is doing right here. So the top blade is the one that's moving. So when point cutting, instead of just going at it, always rest that finger or use that ring finger to rest that still blade. Just gives a little more stability within it. Okay, point cut, point cut, point cut. This is really just to get length off. And now we're gonna go back to our razor. And if you've watched my classes before, you know I love a razor. So <laughs> I like to combine them as well. All right, so when we're going through, I'm gonna first take this whole section right here. I'm gonna leave the length around the hairline. Okay, so just always leaving the perimeter out. If you ever are a little nervous to cut something, just drop it out. It doesn't have to blend, it doesn't have to connect. None of that does, right? So I'm gonna step to the side here. 
this hair, because we're going to slightly layer it, is going to over direct to our previous section right behind the ear here. So it's going to go right behind the ear. And I'm just going to give a little bit of layering to it. My guide is pretty long. So I'm just going to get a little bit of weight taken off right away. Okay. And now everything else is going to be really just carving in and etching how you feel, I'm going to say. But really, we know, and you don't even have to do that step if you don't want. I think it depends how much like weight they want around their ear. I know that I would like to see some of this weight gone in the front of the face and some of this weight gone right in front of the ear hair. So I'm just going to take my section, I'm going to take my razor, and I'm just going to start angling in about, I'd say, angle down to the sideburn area. And it doesn't have to be super long. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just taking a little off at a time. So now see how I've created this kind of negative space, right? So creating negative space. And now in the front, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to go short to long. So we're almost creating this kind of point that it's going to come to, but it won't be short like a classic bob would. And really it's up to you how long you want to leave this. I'm going to shorten this sideburn area just a little bit more here. So I'm just going to do it with my razor. Just like so. So see how really you don't even need, if you don't want to elevate and layer that area, you don't have to. You could take this solid section and just start etching in the pieces that worked, right? So it's really simple. And I see someone says like, they're still not really confident with short hair. I get that. It takes a while. The thing I would say is really practice because I mean, and if I'm being honest, and I've said this many times before, but the only way you're ever going to really know how to cut something right is to do it and mess up on it. So I would get you some mannequins. We always recommend the pivot point mannequins. They are the best. They have the best hair. We love them. And the, you notice she had a bob. This mannequin had a bob, right? I use these till the bitter end. So they come with long hair. Then I give them like a medium haircut, a long haircut, layers. So I try and get multiple haircuts. So it's a bit of an investment getting a mannequin. And you can get the Sanvia Lydia mannequins off our site too, but use it until like this next cut could turn into a fade. If you want to practice your clipper work, it could do a scissor over comb. You could do just a really short pixie, maybe a blended pixie. So my suggestion would be to grab a mannequin and just sit and start working and creating. Because I also think that kind of helps us get out of any kind of funk that we might be in. And you guys tell me, like, I know the hairdresser burnout is real. Like we've all been through it. We've done it. So there's a bit of a burnout happening in our industry. And I really believe like when you practice and put yourself in create, because we're artists at heart, you start creating, you're going to start feeling a lot better about what you have to offer and going in and doing these things every day and feeling confident behind the chair. So that's most important. So get some mannequins and start, practicing a bit more. That's the best thing. Um, someone asked, tell me what's the difference between using scissors and using a razor in this particular area? Okay, so this is totally opinion based right now. This is really just my flavor to it because there are people that could use a scissor and cut like a razor. They can go inside and kind of start shaping it like so. And you could do this a million times, right? My tool of choice is a razor because I find that I get a softer kind of edge to it with how I cut hair. So could you use a scissor? Absolutely. If you did, I would go through and I would start cutting it inside out, right? And I think it was Hugo that kind of taught me to cut like that. So if you take your scissors, flip them vertical and hold them upside down like this, you can go through and point cut or slide down, like slide cut down, get short to long, kind of make it feel like a razored edge. So totally, totally optional. I just find that when I'm using a razor, I can sort of be not more like artistic, but I can kind of freehand and sketch, right? Um, I did used to like sketch and draw and paint. So holding something 
almost like a paintbrush or a pencil and kind of etching my way through it is very comfortable for me. So totally your choice. I like to combine, combine scissor and razor in cuts all the time because areas that I want softer, like the hairline or the sideburn, I tend to use razors and then I'll use the rest of the cut and go through or with a scissor and go through and texturize after. So completely your choice. Um, <laughs> I loved Connie said gorgeous. And yes, the burnout makes me turn out. Uh, put it in drive, baby, and practice. I love it. <laughs> put it in drive. Okay. So we're getting really close to the end here. You're going to notice that I'm going to turn this camera down a little bit more so you can see. I have this mannequin. I'm short, so I have to lower so I can actually lift and cut here. But we want to go through and start layering this. Now, this mannequin already has some pretty good short layers right here, but we're going to go just a little bit shorter. And this style, if you look at the top here, is not going to have an exact part. It's going to be pushed forward to the side. So when you're doing this on a human, work off of the world, if that makes sense. Wherever everyone has kind of the spot where their hair wants to naturally take over, that's where I would take that to. So let's see if I can get a little closer here, but we got to keep her low so you can see the elevation. So let's explain the change of direction on the head one more time because I think I confused everyone, right? So you have your parting from the high point to the top of the ear and then in the back. So that would be like your four quadrants on the head. If you lay your comb on the back of the head and your hand or comb on the side, you're going to see right here, my comb touches my hand. That's where the head, boom, changes directions. Right where it starts to change direction, where these two combs touch, is actually where the head starts to round. This is just how I find my way through haircuts. It's not that you necessarily have to have this section in there. You're not cutting it like this. It's literally just a guideline or a map for me, right? So we're going to do what I would call round layering. You could call it planes, cutting to the planes of the head. What it's going to do is it's going to duplicate the head form. So this is how I'm going to get a nice round shape to my cut. Okay, so first section, because I have my guideline established, normally what I would do is just elevate it and lay it down and see where it's going to hit, right? So that's where it's going to hit. And yeah, it's pretty short. So that is something you can take up with your clients behind the chair. Ask them what they feel comfortable with, if that's what you think. I've come to find that with short hair, I'm going to go a little lower so we can see. I've come to find that with short hair, my guests know what they want, but they also trust what I do. And so they say, well, whatever you think. And I found that if I leave this a little too long on some people, it ends up looking a little too um, bowl-like, if you will. So it looks like a little bit bullish. And so I know I want some texture to it. And a lot of that texture comes into play when I start using my texturizing shears, which we're going to use the 14 tooth point cutting shears. I'll show you that in a sec. Okay, so notice I just took this section straight up from where it lives. I'm going to put my shirt behind it. So it's going straight up from where it lives. The grains of the hair are lifting out of the scalp exactly where they want to live. I'm taking a little piece from my previous section, and then I'm going to comb up the next section exactly where those hairs live. So I'm going to stand behind that and let you see right there. And then I'm point cutting. So I'm still going to have a lot of length at the bottom here. And this one I might have even pulled too far. Boom. And all we're going to do is kind of work in like a sundial pattern around the head shape. So if you trained Paul Mitchell, which I went to a Paul Mitchell beauty school. So this was called round layers. And if you were like an emo kid, like I was back in the day, <laughs> this was basically the haircut I gave everyone. We wanted short layers at the top and we wanted length at the bottom. But what we wanted was something that was round, a round shape. Right. And so because we're looking for a round shape, I want to do something that's going to follow the head shape. So just like so, as I continue down. Now, the thing with these, if you want to, you might notice I'm measuring the head a little bit. Right where my comb sits, it's going to lift off a little bit right here and it lifts off at the top. It's almost like a little peace sign section that is called a plane of the head. And we, why we call it that is because just like how I was finding the big shifts on the head shape, right? Like we can separate the nape area. We can separate the crown area from the back area and the nape area or the side. 
those are big changes on the head shape. They're massive shifts. When you think of that horseshoe shape that we cut most of like our short haircuts with, that's because there's a really big difference from the side to the top. See how it shifts? It's like a box on the head. When you're cutting in the planes of the head like this, you're also gonna get small little flat spots on the head. So instead of big shifts, hold on one sec, I lost my section. Instead of taking big shifts of direction, you're doing small flat ones, just like this. And when you stay within those small flat spots on the head, you'll duplicate your head shape. So you'll get a round effect because the head is round, just like that. And I'm just gonna move through. Now, I know that it can be a little intimidating too if someone had really long hair and says, I wanna chop my hair off and I want a big seat. And you're like, okay, I saw this cut happen, but it was already on short hair. Don't get intimidated. It's literally the exact same. So you're gonna do it the exact same way, whether they have long hair, they have medium length hair, it's still the same steps. So don't let it get caught up in your head that it's something different when it's really just the length, right? So everything will look exactly the same when you're doing this cut, even if it's on someone with longer hair that wants to go short. And honestly, like I like to put my layers in first and then cut the perimeter for the most part. But you'll notice I cut that bob perimeter as like my second or third step. So I would say if you're a little nervous to kind of just go in and cut this, what I would suggest is going in and maybe just cutting a little bob on the haircut. Let's go up again. And really going through and establishing your length first and then put the layers in. It's double the amount of work, which usually I try and avoid. But I think if you're a little nervous, that's a good way to kind of get in there and get used to it, right? So I'm just going to go through here. And I'm just going to kind of connect a little bit more. I'm going to take some of this length, texturize, I should say, off of it here. It doesn't have to be completely gone, but I'm just going to kind of blend the bottom a touch more just by point cutting, just like so. Okay. Now, before I move into the front, I'm going to texturize since we're probably not going to blow dry this live for time reasons. I'll show you the after on my Instagram, which is Ellen Divine Hair. Um, but we want to go through and we're going to put a lot of texture in there. And I like to do it wet and dry. To me, I like to see both. So I'll do a little wet, I'll dry it, and I'll probably do more. And I'm going to go in with my 14 tooth point cutting shears, right? So these are my new favorite. See the gaps that are in them? So all I do when I cut, if I pull it outside or out to the side, I'm just going to take maybe one or two snips. I'm going to get off to the side so you can see. I'm going to go in once. You're going to see kind of like these short hairs get cut inside. And then I'll go again on the edge there. And you'll see little short pieces cut down in there. And I'm just going to do that all along the head. One, two. And this is kind of like the rhythm I've created that works for me. I always do two snips wet and then I'll go through and see what else needs to be addressed dry. Now, if someone's like complaining they want more volume, maybe I would go further down in the base, right? So you can cut further down because short hair is going to kind of make that top long hair pop up more. So following through the 14 tooth point cutting shear, giving some texture to it. And really this requires quite a bit of texturizing, I would suggest with these types of cuts. And these are perfect because then I don't have to go through and do deep point cuts, which I usually love to do, but it's just doing simple motions versus a ton. You can use them vertical too if you want. So you can even go in vertically and take some hair out as well. Okay, so last section coming up because we do have fringe already cut on this mannequin right here. And we're just gonna continue the same effect. I'm gonna move this little fringe bang over. Okay, so here's our last section right on the top here. And we're gonna continue with those round layers that we started with. So see right here, I'm just gonna take my little diagonal line. We're gonna work through the head. I'm gonna show you a couple angles here. So you can see how I work down this section. And I'm just cutting short to long. Okay, let's show right here. Taking a piece of hair 
and I'm only taking about what I would call like a piece size amount. And I'm just gonna cut this short to long right here. Okay, so short, I'm gonna add a little, just a bit length as I go down to match with what's going on down here. And that length can be determined by guess. I know I wanna leave some length on the corner here just because I kind of like this side to be able to whip back a little bit, right? Cool, so any other questions, feel free to chat with us, ask. And I will say like, you know, if you're having issues with pixies, one, definitely like we said, practice, 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 practice. Two, what I used to always do too is um, I would get like a model call going, you know, there's no shame in kind of getting a friend or maybe it's a family member or maybe it's just an Instagram post and you just do a haircut for free because you want to try something new and you want to do it on a human, right? So something like that. And I used to do that with color all the time. Like I lived in a town that didn't really do a lot of like fashion color or funky kind of color. And I really wanted to experiment with it. So I would have people come in and I would just do it complimentary because I wanted to have that experience, right? So think a little beyond the box of just, you know, what you're doing on your day to day and see what else you could do to kind of shift gears if short hair is what you want to get into more, you know? You have to kind of water where you want to grow, if you will. Cool. All right. How's it going? Um, well, because Sarah um, has a question. So why 90 degree layers and not 180 degree uh, long okay. layers on question. short hair? Great question. Okay. So this is because of how I was trained, right? So I was trained uh, that this, and in the comments, say yes if you have to. This is 90, and then this is 180, right? Shifting it all the way up. In principle-based design with Redkin, this is how I was trained, right? We call a vertical 90. Of course, I'm using white combs against a white wall right now. But we would call this vertical 90 and this horizontal 90. And the guess why is when you look at this, what does it create? It creates a 90-degree angle. So if you were to draw a line between these two combs, it's a 90 degree angle. So in Red Kim PBD, they made it simple and said 90 vertical, 90 horizontal, and then this is diagonal 45. So it can definitely, it can get dicey explaining that. Um, it's like, you know, it's a course that can be four days long if you make it. <laughs> so um, it's definitely just a new way, like a different way to cut but you can absolutely still call this 180. It's the same thing. It's just a different word for it. So hopefully that answers your question. Tell me if it does. Um, so you could still say I'm elevating it to 180 degrees and you'd be completely right. It's just the language that I speak with hair cutting is I call that 90 vertical. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so last section here and it's gonna be the fringe area. So. I kind of have the fringe happening. I'm going to get this a little wetter in the front because we want to break that set. And with fringe sections, I like to make it as simple as possible. So she already has a fringe. We're just going to get some of this length off. We're going to take our triangle section that's going to be corner of the eye. Right where that corner is, I kind of rock it up. Watch my elbow for a sec. And that's my section. And I'm just going to go right to the middle here and find my guide, which is underneath a little bit shorter. So get nice and close here. I'm going to over direct that and I'm just going to get any of these. It's a little low, but any of these guys off. So I'm just going to take some of that length off. So anytime I'm cutting like a curtain fringe where I want it wider on the sides or rounded, I take my hair in this triangle and I diagonally comb it over to the opposite corner of the eye right here. And then I cut even, or you can go short to long, whatever you're feeling, right? So same thing, I'm just gonna kind of connect the side here and I'll just pull from beyond that fringe area and do the same thing. Just gonna get some of that length off. And that should be it. So. Basically, once I'm done, I'll kind of break the set. She'll get quite a bit more texture. 
And then when you're blow drying this, I honestly didn't use much um, brushes. I just used my hands. And then when I got to final finish off is I went in with my round brush. So I just went in with my, I think this is the inch round brush. And I just did the top a little bit with a little bit of round brushing, but you get like a super soft kind of whippy Bob Pixie to it. So expedited version for sure. Saw half the cut. Just remember the biggest advice I would give with cutting short hair is take it all in bite-sized pieces and kind of create your roadmap before you start and practice. Order yourself a mannequin, do a few haircuts on it, practice it out. And, you know, last question I see, because I get this a lot, like, how do we check for balance? So I, everyone laughs at me at the salon, I visually check for balance. If you're cross-check, think if you cut vertical, you want to cross-check horizontal, right? So it's always opposite of what you do. But a lot of times I'm this person. I'm checking for balance like this, but I don't get too caught up on it because I've texturized a lot and you're going to always have different lengths. So when you're checking for balance, I suggest looking at the silhouette and just making sure you see a clean transition. If you notice that it's like sticking out funky somewhere or it's sinking in a little bit funky, I would just reassess your sections and cutting positions. But I visually check for balance most often. So any other questions, remember you can hit me up on Ellen Divine Hair. It's my Instagram. And I know Andrew will tell you more, but you can join the affiliate program where you can purchase a pair of shears, put in a discount code. Mine is LND10. That's an extra 10% off. You could also sign up to be an affiliate with Samvia as well. And I'm sure Andrew has more information on that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ellen. We appreciate your time. And as always, great education. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good day.